people ask me about my mindset before playing. Um, it's really, it's, it's, it's simple because, you, you, well I say it's simple, it's not simple at all. You know, first of all, I like to know, I like to know what the drums are going to sound like. So I sit behind the kit, I check everything out. If they sound good, I'm going to sound good. Uh, so, I like to feel the vibe of the room as well, because if you've, uh, if you've played some you know, really good bands, you've got to really, you've got to step up, haven't you? you know, you've got to make sure, this is if we're headlining, that people have come to see you, that they get their money's worth, you know? Because there's nothing worse than someone coming to see you and you just, you just shit. So uh, my mindset for that is really right, the performance, you know, I've got to be a powerhouse, I've got to be tight. I don't can't play too fast because it ruins the vibe for the band. Um, also, I just, I like to feel comfortable in the room. So before, before the show, a lot of people will see me, you know, wandering around like a Labrador. Um, I'll just be uh, socialising, getting the feel for people because it's a, uh, you know, a show's quite a personal thing, even though it's really impersonal. Because, uh, you know, you're performing, you're like a performing monkey. You know? I like, to, I like to get comfortable with people, you know, so, so I'll get in there, I'll check out the surroundings. Oh, I've always got to check the toilet out as well, because if you don't check the toilet out, you could be worrying, like, if you need a poo and you can't do a poo, that's a big thing for me, you know, because I, you know, who, who wants to do a gig when you need a poo? Uh, so I'll get in, check the toilet, get the vibe, I'll sit behind the drum kit, I'll make sure everything's sturdy, because as a drummer, there's nothing worse than shit moving around all over the place, you know, cymbal stands bending over, smacking you in the head. So I get in, in that mindset, I'll sit down, I'll check everything, but I'll write, is that solid? Does that need gaffer tape? How does that sound? Does that need a little tune? So you give it a little tune. And then uh, when I'm happy and ready to go, that is, uh, that's gig time. My mindset is ready, I'm ready to crush, I'm ready to perform. And that's my mindset. So recording drums is for me is really important because uh, that's your voice. You know, even though you'll get a producer, I mean, I've been lucky, you know, that I've worked with some really shit up producers, that they can capture my voice, you know, so I like to sit in the room, I'll, I'll set my kit up, if I can, a day beforehand, so it gets accustomed to the room, so you, it, can, it can feel its temperature, it gets all settled in, all the drums are fidgeted around, because there's nothing worse than retuning re your kit, halfway through a recording session, and, uh, I like my drums just to sound right, just natural. So a lot of people will notice in my recording I play the drums quite high, like on the toms. Yeah, I'll tune them quite high, not play them. I'll tune them quite high so you can hear what I'm doing on the toms because I like to, yeah, you know, I like to fanny around. I'm not just a, you know, people think I'm a meathead. Oh yeah, it's like an atom bomb. Whee, fucking hell! But it's not like that. There are a lot of subtleties I do on the drums that people don't notice when I'm recording. But if you, when you isolate a drum track, you'll notice it. You'll be like, oh shit, he's doing a little ghost roll there. Or, you know, or, uh, oh shit, he's, he's doing something else, like a double or a triplet. So, it's really important for me when I'm doing my drum takes, when I'm just hitting the drums, that A, the mics are out of the fucking way. So there's nothing worse than smashing a bloody mic because it will just really fuck you off. Because nine times out of ten, you'll do it and it'll be the last fucking bar of the last fucking 20 minute song and it'll be like ah oh, fucking microphone and you'll just catch it so uh i'll do that i sit down make sure that all the mics are out of the way the drum kit's got to sound sweet because if it sounds bad here it's going to sound bad in there no matter how much the uh the producer can fuck around and try and make it sound nice it sound you know you can't punish a turd you know simple as oh, shit let me just get that back in there. But um, yeah, so snare drum, gotta be right. It's gotta be right for the song as well, as for the uh, recording even. Not the song, because it's, you know, it's gonna sound good no matter what. But for the recording, it's gotta be the right snare. You know, there's no point playing a really nice hip hop snare. So I've got, 
my wife's watching this, I've only got two snares. You know, if she isn't watching this, I've got about eight or nine snares that I like to just, you know, get the right sound, the right je ne sais quoi, you know. Just get it right, because if that's the sound you're going to have, that's just going to be there forever, encapsulated forever. So I like to make sure that's right. Now I'll record it, headphones in. I like to do a Lars Ulrich sweatband, because, you know, you don't want your headphones moving. Um, when I'm recording, I know Dave always, I like to hear the drums uh, from a drummer perspective. So a lot of albums will be left to right or right to left even. I like to hear the drums recorded right to left as I'm sat behind the kit. So the mix will be as I'm hearing it. So that's, that's what I like to do. I, like, I don't like to eat. That's a big thing for me, both live and recording. I don't like to eat before I play because I find it slows me down. And it, it just stodges me up, so uh, I can't do that. So, yeah, plenty of water though. We've got to have the water, the HTO, to help you uh, keep hydrated. And then when I finish recording, I like isolated tracks. So, you know, Dave will give me the isolated tracks. I'll be like, okay, right, so I can just hear how it's going to sound. And, you know, it's not really about mindset, really. It's more about methodology and how... I like it to feel, you know, because it's a big thing recording. You can hear yourself. That's like I say, encapsulate it forever. Apparently, uh, I'm renowned for hitting quite hard. I don't actually hit quite hard. It's how I uh, it's how I catch a snare on the rim. So uh, this is a snare drum. It's uh, one of my new ones, which is nice. So you get your stick. You hold it quite far back. A lot of people will play up near there to get the uh, to get a ghost note. I, however, I hold it quite far back. You know, and I'll I'll play it like I'm karate chopping. It's all about the Daniel son. So when I hit it, I don't hit the centre of the drum. I choke it by going off centre and flat. So a lot of drummers will play like that. So the centre of the drum, they think they're getting a better tone, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with it. So if you hit the centre of the drum, it sounds quite nice. So what I do, I literally hit it off centre, so aiming at your, your three o'clock. It'll, it'll be pretty consistent as well. So, and I'll just, and it'll be a full bodied hit. So you'll be hitting the rim and your stick. So it's almost laying flat across. It absolutely fucking kills your sticks. So if you're poor, don't bother doing it. Like that. And the, the trick is to get it consistent. If you're going, it doesn't sound right. So you need to get both hands always hitting off center. Now if you're doing a snare roll, need to bring it back so you snare just out of the way of each other but yeah that's how I do it so it is off center hit full bodied smack and that is now that also has to come into the other parts of the kit because if your hi-hat's quite low so if you're down there you're not gonna, you're going to be interrupted so you've got to have a higher hi-hat so so when you're in Your ghost notes because you can still bring it up and do your ghost notes. It's all about that power, and then when you're hitting down, you kind of want to lock your wrist out as well, so you're getting that full hit from there. So your 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 forearm is almost an extension of your stick, you know. So, and I can get that power from there up here, up here. It doesn't matter. It's all about just getting that full bodied smack off centre of the drum and that's how I do my snare. I'm not one for, who sits behind a kit for four hours a day and practices because I've got a job, I've got kids, so uh, I, I try and keep my body in tune with the drums whenever I can, so if I'm at work I have actually got a set of sticks that I'll just sit there and I'll do that. I'll sit there, I'll do some, you know, 
doubles or some paradiddles and we'll just sit there, I'll just twist, you know, twizzle a stick just so my hands are still used to sticks. I mean, when I play in other bands, I tend to use a double pedal. I don't in a horse because I don't feel it needs it. So I'll, I'll sit there and I'll just be like that. And I'll just sit there and I'll tap. Just so my body's still doing the muscle memory, still doing the routine, the, uh, the uh, process, you know. I'm quite a process guy. I like to do things in a certain way. So I'll just sit there, I'll do that. You know, make sure I've still got my toes high up. And, uh, you know, so my body hasn't lost that positioning. Um, I also uh, drive the wife mad. I'll sit there and I'll just tap like that. Just tap hearing different things. Because uh, everything makes its own little acoustic sound. And sometimes I'll be like, do you know what? I really like that note. I might actually use it as a snare drum. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say I practice a lot. I mean, I, I play drums weekly. You know, as much as I can get. I would do more, but I can't. So, yeah, basically, muscle memory, that's a big thing for me. That's how I keep focused and keep... Uh, keep fresh on the drums and listening to the new, uh, sorry, listening to new music, you know, it's really important for me as a drummer to bring ideas to the table for uh, a horse and for mongrel, for any other project I'm in, engaged in, you know, I, just, I don't like always just sitting there going, yeah, that'll be a good beat, we'll just do that. I like to bring something to the table, so I'll be, you know, I'll practice that, I'll listen to something and I'll be like, wow, what's that they're doing, you know, I'll, I'll try and figure that out on my hands, and then when I do get behind the kit, I'll be there. If I've had a prolonged, like, absence from, a dr uh, from the drum kit, you know, like injury from rugby or something like that, the first time I'll sit behind the drum kit, I'll be fucking agony, I'll get blisters, my forearms will cramp up, but you'll condition yourself to it, so I just, I, you know, the more I play, the more I condition myself to hitting the drums, so... You know, that first snare hit, I'll be like, oh my God, and it'll get weaker and weaker, but as the weeks go on, the muscle memory will return, the old aches will disappear, and uh, yeah, that's how I do it, I'll keep fresh, you know, muscle memory.